And uh, we're going to begin our study with a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we invite your presence here as we study together. We're so thankful that we have this opportunity to study your word together. And uh, we need your Holy Spirit to teach us. We are thankful for the things that you have been uh, unfolding to us. And we recognize the responsibility and the burden. And we need your strength and help. We know, Lord, that um, as we continue to walk in this light, there's many trials and struggles as we deal with self. We also pray for your healing hand to be upon those that are suffering health difficulties. Help us to be obedient to you in all that we do. Be with us now through thy spirit. And we pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning again. Now, um, just to deal with a few things we were talking about before, I'm just going to share this screen. So this is the, um, the information about uh, the School of the Prophets and its sale. And so we know that it was sold uh, for $650,000. And the asking price was... Uh, was seven hundred and ninety nine thousand and five hundred dollars. <throat> now, when we say that it was um, um, so the difference between its sale price and um, the asking price was what was the percentage again? How did that go? Iran, and how would we calculate that? It's eighteen point seven percent and the way to calculate it is just take the the the, the sale price of six fifty thousand divided by um let me see here what was it listed for seven hundred ninety nine seven ninety nine five hundred yep so I just divide those and then you get point eight one three which is the complement of one eight seven Okay, so that so the eight one three gives you the one eight seven. Is that how it works? Essentially, yeah. Okay, so they're so they're tied together. So that's understandable. Okay, is there another way to do the calculation um, so that you look at the difference? So the difference you would subtract them and then do a a, a calculation, right? So seven nine nine five hundred minus six five zero 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 zero. So the difference is one hundred and forty nine thousand and five hundred dollars, right? So so that would be uh, eighteen point seven percent of the seven nine five zero zero. Is that what it is? Yeah, it looks like when I do that, it gives me 0.186991. Okay, yeah. Okay, makes sense. Okay. So and now a number of things about this. We pointed out the 10 baths or 10, bedroom, 10 bedrooms and 7 baths. So that's a symbol of the 10th day of the 7th month, right? Uh, this 4,176 4, square feet. Um, that's 29 times 144. So that would be a short month times uh, 144. Um, and then uh, now this here, time on Movoto, what's that? It's just the time that's been listed here. Correct. So yesterday, when we looked at it, it would have been 710 days. I think that would be correct, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay. And then 
it has this great schools rating. So five out of 10 to seven out of 10. So that would be a symbol of the 10th day, of the fifth month and the 10th day, of the seventh month. Right. So, so kind of interesting whether there's other things uh, that we could see. So if it was 711 days ago that they listed this, I'm just going to see here. Minus 711. So they would have listed this December 19, 2020. Is that what they're saying? I would say that would be correct. Okay. <laughs> anyway, it's kind of interesting. Um, Whole, that whole thing about uh, the sale of the School of the Prophets and how that fit in with the line that lines that we have behind me. Well, it's it, it's also interesting when you play with that number just a little bit more about the uh, percentage that they took off the price. Yeah, because the the way that this would would come out with its decimals <clears throat> yeah. would be 18.699, percent Yeah. So three times 187 being repeated. Well, you could, well, you could actually continue going though. Well, according, according to this, as, as I'm looking at it, after this, it becomes zero, zero, zero. Oh, what? Okay, so how are you doing that calculation? What I did is I took, using a spreadsheet, which may or may not give us the, the right numerical data. Yeah. I entered the formula equals one minus, in parentheses, 650,000 divided by 799,500, close parentheses, and then I, I went to format the cells, and in formatting the cells, it came out just as I just read. Okay, so I have, uh, if I divide the two numbers, I get 0 0.81300, 81300, 81300, just repetent. So it just keeps going on. I, don't I, I went out to 13 decimal places. Yeah, well, mine's up to um, a lot more than that. Okay. So it just keeps repeating, right? Um, okay. And then that's the complement to uh, 187. So if we put that into percents, uh, you take the reverse of that, right? Sure. And then it becomes uh, 187, 18.7%. So, but yeah, so the, we just have all of these symbols attached to it. Uh, and of course it's sold on January 21st, 2021. So there we have the symbol for midnight. So <clears throat> how many days after December 6th would that have been? Okay. Um, And then the second question, how many days after July 18th did that bill? Okay, so if we go um, July, okay, well, let, let's do all this first. So we got July 18th. And then we got December 6th. And then they're going to put it up for sale on January uh, 13th. Right. And then they're going to sell it eight days later. So, yeah, nothing really significant that I see as far okay. as, um, you know, it's sold. Wait. No, that's pretty significant. 
Um, so j- sold January 21st, 2021. Right. That's 187 days after July 18, 2020. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Yeah, that's not significant at all. Nothing, not, nothing significant. It's 126 that I see. days after. 187 days oh, after July 18, 2020. Really? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're so just to, just to see this here. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they couldn't have had a better day to sell it. So here you'll see on this. Uh, it, it's, can we consider that a rebuke? A well, rebuke? We have to. Yeah. Now, it's going to be 46 days after December 6, 2020. 46? Days okay. after December 6, 2020. Okay, so what we've got there are three numbers that all have relevance within the studies we've been having. Yeah. Hmm? What's 46 signify From From the 46 years in the pr- prophetic mirror. All right. Yeah. Okay. yeah, and then the eight days and then the 187 days. But I mean... Here again, you look at this under under December sixth. <clears throat> yeah, fourteenth day of the first month, Passover. Yes. Yeah. What about thirty eight? I'm looking at that. I'm not. Nothing is clicking yet. There's got to be something there, though. Yeah. Now, it's interesting, the 179 plus 187. Now, that's 366. That's a leap year. Right? Okay. So, Because normally 178 plus 187 is 365. Um, so... I don't know if that means anything, but that's just the thing that I notice about these numbers. But, I mean, the 187, I mean, you just couldn't have picked a better date to sell the School of Prophets after July 18th. Well, you couldn't have picked three better symbols all to yeah. line up. You got the 187, the 46, and the 8. And the eight. They clearly didn't pick the three symbols. No. Okay. So, yeah, we, we definitely have to consider this pretty significant for the sale of the school. So, so I'd placed it there on the on the board, not particularly certain that it was the correct way mark, but I think that we would have to say that it is. Right. Uh, because it ties in the December 6th date and begins with July 18, 2020, where we're beginning that line, basically as the time of the end, right? So you got the formalization and the empowerment. And so, yeah, that kind of nails it down. I would think, yeah, well, we got more than that. We got lots of witnesses. Yeah, but, three numbers. Right? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so the... Um, and then we have, of course, the sale uh, from from the day that it, they put it up. Now, 13 is the number of rebellion, we should remember as well. Right. So they put it up on January 13th. Mm-hmm. Um, 38, rise up. Okay, so that's the 38 years of the paralytic. Is that what that is? That's part of it, and also the thirty-eight years in the wilderness rise up and. Oh, oh my, oh my, yeah. Okay. So, so, so when they rebel, there's thirty-eight years more, right? That they have to wander in the wilderness. Is that the idea? Is that what we're saying? 
I'm not sure, okay. but I just know that it was associated by Jeff. The 38. Okay. okay. And and we have it there on the 13th. So that's the rebellion of not wanting to enter into the land. Um. um. Yeah, so there's uh, there's probably more we could notice. But anyway, that um, just to remind people who are watching this and might not have all of the... Right, so that's there. If we look at the whiteboard... So you have to switch your screen. Yeah. just takes a second. <clears throat> right, so there we have, um, uh, as you can see there, we put up the sale of the School of the Prophets on January 21, 21, eight days there. So, and we had already marked um, this 187 from this one factor, but the fact that it's 187 days since July 18th, that would have to be the most significant one. Do this here, 187 days. Would that be the most significant? Well, to me, the 187 days is just the, the most straightforward, uh, you know, to show someone. The 46. Because didn't Judah go into captivity 46 years after Israel went in? Yep. So... Would this be a symbol then of the movement being in a type of captivity right now? Well, yeah, um, a type of captivity. I mean, I'm not, I mean, this is addressing part of the movement, right? Right. Um, <clears throat> So, but if they're in a captivity, they can come out of captivity. Well, isn't, isn't this current situation of the disagreement between other, between those in the movement, isn't that a type of captivity because we can't go forward? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I would agree there. Okay, so, so, I, but, but yeah, I mean, I understand what you're saying. I just think from presenting it to people, it's these. I, I've been saying as far as the date itself, right? You know, we have the 187s, uh, you know, percentages and these things about it, but it's more the strongest 187 symbol is the number of days from July 18th to the sale of the School of the Prophets. I'm in. I'm in full agreement with what you're saying. But are we not to establish something on the testimony of two or more witnesses? Yeah, that's why we have these other witnesses. So right. we, we have all these witnesses. I'm just saying this most straightforward one's 187. If I was going to uh, talk to somebody like Jeff, I mean, I would show him the 187 days. Right. You know, I'd say, look, you know, the school sold here. Like if Jeff was to look at what we've done with this line, I don't know if he could argue with it. I don't think he would. Yeah, I don't think he would. But 
but you know this this is part of the problem that that we're having uh, with within the movement right now is we have all of this light about what's been happening within the movement but most of the movement is focused on what's happening outside in the world right yeah. right and and those things are Significant in a sense. Well, yeah, that's not what I'm thinking about. I mean, they're not the things that that help us focus upon what we have to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, and and they're not uh, redeeming. No. <laughs> Sorry, wrong words. No, when it comes when it, in order to understand who we are and when we are, we need to understand the internal lines. Because those right. are the things that are going to help us to be prepared. Because we want to see how God is leading us. We know that the things happening in the world are reflecting the signs of the times. But we really need to know our situation. Because, because we're in a mess right now. I mean, within the movement. You know, there's a, all of this division. And, and it isn't like... Um, like some people sort of depict it like, well, Theodore wants to, uh, you know, have everybody follow him, right? This is what I've been told. Uh, and that's why they're, they're resistant. They don't like me, so they don't want to follow what I'm doing. But I have no interest in people following me. I just want the movement to study together, to see these things. And it doesn't matter where they come from. Um, you know, we need to know these things. And so this, you know, what this study in the book of Judges has done and this understanding of the lines has done is it's really helped us focus where we are right now. So we know we have work to do. And, you know, as we move into this study of chapter 10, which we started on, um, you know, Angela had sent me an email. Hi, hi Angela. Um, and uh, she wasn't here yesterday, but she did watch the meeting. And, you know, when we're talking here in Judges chapter 10, you know, after Abimelech, there arose to defend Israel, Tola, the son of Pua, the son of Dodo, a man of Issachar. He dwelt in Shamir in Mount Ephraim. So, He's going to judge Israel 23 years, and he's going to be buried there in Shamir, which is in Mount Ephraim. So he's, even though he's of the tribe of Issachar. Now, Angela suggested that this, this, um, is it, you're saying our group is Issachar? That is what we're studying is a message of Issachar? Yeah, somebody. because because of the times, the, the, the knowledge of the times, and then it's uh, telling Israel what to do. And I thought, if we're supposed to be set up, putting up the beacon for Israel to the rest of the movement, so to speak, to follow, right? Yeah. And also, I don't know if you recall, you sent you sent an, a, a, a greeting to 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 the movement that we were supposed to meet the end end of April. I think it was of this year. And some of them responded and some didn't. A lot of them didn't. April 30th. Yeah, April 30th. So, and that's the thing is we, we have made these types of invitations, right, to to the movement. But um, there doesn't seem to be much of an interest in, in this happening. But, you know, based upon the lines here, I mean, maybe this inf uh, invitation is connected to an application for an extension of time. That is, it's the second Passover is, is sort of my point. And um, so, so maybe this has to happen on the second Passover, if that makes sense as a symbol, not literally.
any other thoughts about um, uh, Tola? Well, in this, in what we were what we were addressing yesterday, mm -hmm. from the Spirit of Prophecy, the third paragraph of what we were looking at which was Signs of the Times, August 11th of 1881. Yep. Yeah. Read, so. Devo devotion and humility have ever characterized the men whom God has entrusted important responsibilities in his work. The divine call to Moses in the desert found him distrustful of self. He realized his unfitness for the position to which God had called him. But having accepted the trust, he became a polished instrument in the hand of God to accomplish the greatest work ever committed to mortals. Had Moses trusted in his own strength and wisdom and eagerly accepted the great charge, he would have evinced his in entire unfitness for such a work. The fact that a man feels his own weakness is at least some evidence that he realizes the magnitude of the work appointed him. And this gives room for hope that he will make God his counselor and his strength. Such a person will move no further nor faster than God, than he knows God is leading him. A man, okay. okay. And, and that's an important point there. Right. Uh, about allowing God's leading. Um, so I'm just trying to bring this up here. So I've read, I've read down to the beginning of uh, paragraph five. Right. So oh, mine doesn't show the paragraphs. Okay. A man will gain power and efficiency as he accepts the responsibility which God places upon him and with his whole soul seeks to qualify himself to bear them aright. However humble his position or limited his ability, that individual will attain true greatness who cheerfully respond to the call of duty and trusting to the divine strength seeks to perform his work with fidelity. He will feel that he has a sacred commission to battle against wrong, to strengthen the right, to elevate, comfort, and bless his fellow men. Indolence, selfishness, and love of worldly approbation must yield to this high and holy calling. Engaged in such a work, the weak man will become strong, the timid, brave, the irresolute, firm and decided. Each sees the importance of his position and his course inasmuch as heaven has chosen him to do a special work for the king of kings. Such men will leave the world better for their having lived in it. Their influence is exerted to elevate, to purify, and to ennoble all with whom they com come in contact, and thus they help to prepare their fellow men for the heavenly courts. Okay, so, and then it says Tola governed uh, Israel 23 years, and then they bring up Jair. So right. if we take this that um, Tola is this period of time uh, after the failure of um, the Trump prediction, right? Um, so this would be a message uh, from a man of Issachar. So Issachar is having knowledge of the times and also is couched between two lions or two asses, pardon me. Right. So he's 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 bury, bearing this burden. And um, and then we look at his. Um, the work that's being done that. It, Ellen White describes this sort of calming influence. And, and it's also 23 years. The symbol there primarily to me is, is has to do with the time prophecies. Um, 
but we know the 23 and the 22 go together to make 45. And um, and then it's gonna he's gonna be followed by J a year, right? So so there's a preparatory work that's going on in this movement right now, or that should be going on as far as, as um, this calming influence this to bring about order. So in this, in, in this situation, he was leading by example. Mm -hmm. yeah. and I think that's more what we're being called to do. I mean, right now, what we are seeing are many that are willing to reject out of hand the offer to study together right and and you know and, that, and i've struggled with this whole thing because i mean i know that some, some of it's my fault in that you know as i've tried to look back at how i've done things i mean i could have done things differently but you know i can't really blame myself completely but I'm, I just recognize the things that I did wrong. So there's this prejudice against me as a person. Um, and, um, you know, so, I mean, I think that this has to come from the people who are following these studies. I mean, well, but the idea that we need to make an invitation and this invitation needs to be, I mean, I really believe that we need to, um, um, Toby, uh, to be giving us a message. Whether that's going to happen or not, I don't know. But that, that would be Christmas Eve, right, the 24th, that I'm thinking that we need to um, to address these things. And, and we know that that's going to be 46 days after November 8th, after the election. So... <clears throat> Well, let's let's look at this you know, a little further as well. Mm -hmm. Over these last several months, as a witness to the different things that have gone on, mm -hmm. I have been watching quite a change in many, but very specifically with you. I was there watching the meeting that went on between you and Larry Lesher. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there were some things that could be handled differently, but there was also quite a bit of baiting that went on on Larry's part. Well, and I got caught by that bait. Right. Mm -hmm. But I've also watched that you have become quite a bit more patient and not as willing to jump at bait mm -hmm. as you had been many months ago. Now, this is something that all learning from experience, right? You go through these experiences and you have to learn from them. But it's also that God has been leading. Mm -hmm. And we've been through some trials and some challenges that have made us more dependent upon God. Exactly. Realizing the dependence upon God. I mean, obviously, we're always dependent upon him. But, I mean, even here, moving here and all the things that have happened, it's it, for me, it's kind of crazy. Uh, it's hard to explain to people what's what's really going on. But for me, it's it's just not out of it's not out of, you know, it's something that's not normal. Let's put it that way. The things that are happening uh, with Heidi and I. So. Um, and this ministry here in this building. So God put us here for, to teach us mostly, but to minister to others. And it's taken me out of my comfort zone because I'm not social. And here I'm in part of this community, which is pretty challenging. Um, I mean, it's always been challenging being a Seventh-day Adventist for me, you know, having to be a part of a church. 
but you just try to improve on, I mean, you try to learn the lessons that God's teaching you about your own character. And that's what we have to do. And, and that's what we have to do in this movement. We're not aware of our own character, of our faults, or at least we, we try to ignore them. So, so what, what I think here with this Tola and JR is, I mean, they're connected together, right? Right. So, so JR then is, well, he's a Gileadite. So what does that mean? What does it mean he's a Gileadite? Well, that he would be from the city of Gilead, but what tribe would he be from? Yeah, that's what I'm asking. So Gilead. Where is that? Isn't it within the, the territory of Manasseh? Yeah, that's my understanding. Okay. Um, well, I, I mean, it, that, but uh, uh, if we were to compare scripture with scripture, if we looked at Numbers 3241. Okay, 3241. Right. Jair, the son of Manasseh, went and took the small towns thereof and called them Haveth Jair. Yeah, so Gilead's given unto Machir, the son of Manasseh, and he dwelt therein. So we have... Yeah. So this is referring to a later son of Manasseh. Um, right, so, because you got Maker and then Jair. Son of Manasseh. Okay, go on. Well, in, in Judges 10.4, mm -hmm. we're being told that Jair had 30 sons that rode on 30 ass colts, and mm -hmm. they had 30 cities, which are called Havoth Jair, or the villages yeah. of Jair. Yeah. So, I mean, we understand the symbolism of the ass colts, mm -hmm. but why 30 cities? Well, there's 30 sons, so, 30 no, animals and 30 cities. So we have these three 30s. Now, I mean, I take when I see the number 30, I just think of a month. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, to me here, there's symbols of time. Um, right. Okay. Three symbols of time. And it's three times 30. So, however, we want to understand that. Um, but it's, 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 it has to do with completion. Three. Right. And then this 30 symbolizing a month. And, and we know that um, the prophecy regarding Islam has this period of five months. Right. So the month becomes a symbol there. And, and we also have, of course, the ass cults themselves. OK, so but in we have that with Issachar because Issachar couches between uh, or yeah, between two. Uh, um, asses, right? And then we have under the burden of those. And then we have these ass cults here, 30 of them. So this would be the message that follows the message of Tola. Right. Now, again, if, we, if we're comparing scripture with scripture, where we're looking at this 
that had 30 sons that rode on 30 ass colts. Yeah. We'd go back to the song of uh, Deborah and Barak in Judges 510. Yeah. Yeah, this is the 10th day of the fifth month. Right. Speak ye that ride on white asses, and ye that sit in judgment and walk by the way. And then we combine that with Judges 12, 14. Yeah. So 12, 14 is, um, and he had 40 sons and 30 nephews that rode on three score and 10 ass colts, and he judged Israel eight years. And that's, of course, um, uh, what's his name? Abdon, right? So, so we have that uh, symbol as well. So we have we have these two judges, one from Issachar and one from Manasseh. Yeah. Is there something important in the symbolism of the selection of these two judges? Well. I mean, one of the things is I look at when I see Issachar and I see th like the names of the tribes, I think of them as periods of time. So one of the things that I had done is I had, which I showed you before, I'd had Issachar on a chart, um, but I it was a chart I was working on, so it wasn't actually correct. Um, but I had 54,000, what's it here, 54,400 days. Um, um, and I was counting from July 18th, 1870. So why would I count from July 18, 1870? You've got the 187, 187, but now 1870, that was something having to deal with, uh, it went fallibility. Right. Yeah. Now, where this brings us to is um, I, I had there that it brought us to February 22nd, but that was wrong. It actually brings us to June 27th, 2019. Now, uh, June 27th, 2019. Um, Angela, do you know what that is? I wish I did. <laughs> okay. So in 2019, uh, we had, and I'm, I'm trying to remember the exact dates of the camp meeting, but we had a camp meeting in Alberta. And this is the one where um, uh, Tess was there. That's going to be at the end of June. I'm not sure the exact dates. Oh, I know June 29th was when we were baptized, rebaptized. Okay, so it was during that camp meeting then. Right? So, yeah, June 29th was the Sabbath. So, this is the Thursday. So, it puts us into that camp meeting. Um, and, and I probably have to try to find out exactly what was presented on that date. Um, but this, this is a situation that arose uh, at that camp meeting where they were telling us that there is not going to be a Sunday law. So uh, some stuff happens on that day regarding, um, uh, uh, well, it's kind of hard to go into. So, so anyway, you remember that anyway. That what was that date again, please? June twenty seventh. Now, June twenty seventh is a symbolic date as well, um, because that's going to be the date that the June twenty second um, article, the Pentecost article, by uh, Samuel Snow in eighteen forty four, is published. So it's going to be written on June twenty second. It's published on June twenty seventh. So 627 is also the year in which um, we count the 40 years to the to the siege, right? So that's from Ezekiel's prophecy as well. So 627, June 27, it, it becomes a symbol. Um, 
So, so you know, without going into too much detail, basically it brings us to this camp meeting where this divide happens um, between uh, these the movement. So Parminder's group in Canada, at least, here is presenting um, that there is not going to be a Sunday law. And so that's that's going to take us from this papal infallibility, um, 54,400 days, using the number of the tribe of Issachar, to this to this date. Does, does that make sense to people? That of, of how I'm making an application. Of Issachar, that it's a period of time, and it, it brings us from this symbol to uh, something we see that's going to be manifested as we progress. It's going to progress till we get to August 29th. Right when Parminder's rebellion occurs, becomes this full blown rebellion. So it's, it's a couple of months before then. Anyways, that makes sense to anybody. For the symbol of Issachar. That is, Issachar is going to be standing up against... I'm sorry, yes, I, I've been trying to get that, my button here to let you know that, yeah, I, I understand that. Okay. I think we've talked about this before, the 57,000 days. Uh, well, it's 54,400 days. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, yeah. but I, I believe that number was discussed earlier in our studies by you, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, I did this to present it before. Yeah, I remember that. But, but I, I was never really sure where to, to count it from, uh, I guess, is part of it. So, I, I mean, at one point, I think I counted it from... In 1872, um, and to some date in 1872, and I can't remember what date it was. Um, but so I tried different places. But counting it from this July 18, 1870 date brings us here at least to this camp meeting in Alberta and um, to things that happened during that camp meeting. without going into lots of detail, so. Now, wasn't Issachar also one of the tribes more Northern than the others? Yeah. And Manasseh was one that was more Eastern? Well, Manasseh's in the East, right? So you got Manasseh, Reuben, and um, the other one. What are the, what are yeah. the, that, yeah. On, on the east side of the Jordan. But Manasseh is divided. Right. Manasseh also has territory on the west side. Or or in the central. Yeah. Well, yeah. But I mean, the west side of the Jordan. Right. <clears throat> so does Issachar, with, with what you're applying here, does it also have an interrelation to giving a warning message from the north. I don't know. And, and, and I, I keep always saying that wrong too when I talk about. So when we have Issachar, Issachar is, um, just to get back to what Issachar is, um, Issachar is a strong ass couching down between two burdens. I put between two asses, which didn't make sense to me. So he's a strong ass. So Issachar is um, here, this symbol of Islam and, and couching down between two burdens. He saw the rest was good and the land that it was pleasant and bowed his shoulder to bear, to bear and became a servant unto tribute. So 
I'm not sure what all of this means, particularly prophetically. Um, I mean, a lot of it applies, of course, to literal Issachar um, in symbolic language. But uh, we know that Issachar has uh, this characteristic of being a strong act, couching down between two burdens. So, um, so exactly where, where we could put this 54,400 days, all I'm saying is at least here, I can put it from this symbol of July 18th, which is also connected to papal infallibility and, and tie it to the rebellion that occurs and the division that occurs between um, the movement and the message. So, so those are so those are some of the things that we still have to consider exactly how we deal with these these tribes and the numbering of the tribes and as far as the periods of time. So I have put that number in different places and it works in different ways. But here it can we can tie it to uh, something that's fairly solid. So then when we deal with Jair, he's he's of the tribe of Manasseh, and he has these symbols of Islam as well, but also these th symbols of 30. So, so we have Issachar, we have Manasseh. Now, is there a question there? Well, I don't know. I'm just saying, what do we have that we can deal with Manasseh as a symbol? I mean, there's... What did Jacob say about Manasseh? You know, because, you know, I mean, one is, we know Manasseh as a tribe symbolized something, but we also have King Manasseh. And does that relate us to the 2520? Just the name Manasseh. Through the king, yes. Yeah. So, so here we have um, somebody of the tribe of Manasseh. He's a Gilead, Gileadite. He's going to judge Israel 22 years. So that's going to be a symbol of unity, right? Right. Um, <laughs> restoration. And then he has 30 sons that rode on 30 ass colts, and they had 30 cities, which are called Havath Jair unto this day, um, which are in the land of Gilead, right? So if we're going to look at the message then <laughs> that's being represented here, how would we characterize it if, if we're correct about the message of Tola? that it's the message basically where we're in right now. Does this for us have an interrelationship with the 1843 chart with the use of the number 45? Well, yes, but okay, so let's look at one thing. If if we're saying that we're in this message now, that message would have began on November 8th, right? Correct. And today is the 23rd day since November 8th. Would that be significant or not? I would think that it would have to be significant. Okay. Okay. 
gap. So, so if we go from November 8th and we count, that is the first day, then we would count uh, today, November 30th is 23 days. And then we have um, another 22 days, right? And that's going to bring us to um, December 22nd. So that's going to be two days before the um, the 24th, right? Which is where we're pointing to. Now, so that's going to be the Thursday before New Year's Eve or Christmas Eve. And, and we say that we're going to be making an invitation. Um, would that be the invitation being accepted or something to that effect? I mean, I'm not really trying to predict things. I'm just saying, would that make sense? Now, it also happens to be December 22nd, so 22 days uh, for 22 years. Just a thought. All right. Now I'm doing this in an inclusive count of these 45 days, right? So we're not counting from the election. Whether that's the correct way to do it or not, I don't know. But it seems to me that this has to occur within this period of time, that this is connected to uh, this call, I mean, that we're talking about. So then we would really need to know, if we're going to apply that, what are these 30 suns representing these 30 ass cults? and the 30 cities. Is there any way we can understand these symbols? Because if this is the time that we're in, in this, this period of time within Collins, 46 days, Well, we've had a handle on number three before. Yeah. 30, so be, 30 being three by 10. Yeah. So are we being tested by the three? Well, and, and we know that the three days was a symbol of a call, right, to Jerusalem for repentance. Right. Um, but we also have 30 here. So remember, we had taken the, the story of Ezra, and we had looked at a day for a month, right? So right. we had these 30, um, 30, 30 days for each of these days, right? Um, so I'm not sure what that means in, in the context here, but it is a symbol that that we have in connection with the story of Ezra. But we have sons, as cults, and, and cities. So sons, as cults, cities, we have three by three by three. Yeah. By 10. All of that multiplied together would be 2,700. Yeah. Would that have anything to do with what we're addressing right now? Um, I don't know. Or would the, the additive 90 be more important? I don't know. I mean, obviously, Anja puts the age of 30 for a priest to be a minister. Right. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't have an answer to this really. Um, we have these symbols and we seem to fit this here into our time. Maybe it'll be understood as we move along. So Judges 10.5, and Jair died and was buried in Camon. Mm -hmm. What does the name Camon have to do with what we're dealing with right now? Well, it means elevation. Okay. It's a place east of the Jordan, right? Obviously, because he's from Manasseh and Gilead. Um, Okay, now, following with the, the spirit of prophecy, but then having a, a thought question. We have Tola governed Israel 23 years and was succeeded by Jair. This ruler also feared the Lord and endeavored to maintain his worship among the people. In conducting the affairs of the government, he was assisted by his sons, who acted as magistrates, and went from place to place to administer justice. We have this symbol of these two judges administering Israel or the affairs of, of this within the tribes for a total of 45 years. 45 as a symbol can be produced by nine multiplied by five. Mm -hmm. So is this a, a symbol of the wise virgins? Well, I think what I would look at with the magistrates here. Right. I mean, one of the things we see in the story of Ezra is he sets up the civil authority, right? In order, and, and he's going to do that then, and they're going to do these divorcement proceedings according to the law, right? They're going to have this period of 88 days in which they do that, correct? Okay. So, um, so here I see some connection there between these sons and their actions. It represents part of the work of what's happening, but I think it's, um, it's also just much more symbolic of the message that that's being given right now. Okay. Okay, so when it comes to Jair, um, so you read some of this here. Um, so it says at the end of his reign, Israel is going to relapse into idolatry, uh, which is going to be further disobedience and oppression. Right, and the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam and Ashtaroth and the gods of Syria and the gods of Zidon and the gods of Moab and the gods of the children of Ammon and the gods of the Philistines and forsook the Lord and served not him. Yeah. So I'm not really sure, you know, because we, we, have, we have this bringing us up to basically the end of 2022, right? Tola and Jair. And then we have this period of rebellion. And, and are we to continue just following along that this is going to follow afterwards? Well, the number of gods that they're, that they're noting or the number of gods of the different regions that are being noted 
were seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so is is this a symbol of perfect apostasy? Well, we also that it happens 18 years. Well, if we reverse 18 and we have 81, is that also not a symbol of midnight? Well, I would just say that you have these seven um, gods that they're worshiping, and the 18 years gives us July 18. Uh, I, I seven I, again. Yeah. I mean, we do have uh, this article that we've been reading is, is in 1881, right? So, and this one's particularly... August 11th, 1881, right? Right. So we have we have the symbol of Islam, and then we have this 18 and 81. So these two symbols are tied together. So, you know, we don't discount the 18 and 81. Uh, but we're going to have these 18 years. And then, um, if I remember correctly, when we go through here... Um, So we're going to be can't remember. Maybe it's in the next chapter dealing with Jephthah. Can't remember. I don't know. I know we had a seven year period somewhere. I just don't remember where it was, but I thought it was one of these that we attached the eight, the seven and the 18. Um, So you're going to have these 23 years, these 22 years, and then these 18 years uh, that are mentioned. But these 18 years are years of oppression. So, so the question I have is, we, we have this these two judges that bring us into at the time we're in right now. So this further disobedience and oppression, um, is this something that becomes a repeat and enlarge when we look at it on our lines, or is it something that's going to still follow? Is it a zoom into something on our lines that's going to address this apostasy? Because one of the things we know is, is that there's this divorcement from these strange wives. So we know that this is something that has to do with Miller's rules. And so I'm just saying that we could take with Judges chapter 10, verse 6 and onward, as we apply it to our lines, uh, to go back and cover some of the same same uh, territory as far as a message in this movement of rebellion. And so there was, I just can't remember what it is. Um, You know, this is where they're going to cry unto God, and and God's going to answer them. But it doesn't really say how he answers them. Um, let's just read this here. This is kind of interesting. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord, and um, served Balaam and Ashtoreth and the gods of Syria, and the gods of Zidon, and the gods of Moab, and the gods of the children of Ammon the gods of the Philistines. So you got Balaam, Ashroth, and then five different uh, groups that are mentioned to come to the seven. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel and sold them into the hands of the Philistines and into the hands of the children of Ammon. And that year, they vexed and oppressed the children of Israel. Eighteen years, all the children of Israel that were on the other side, Jordan, in the land of Amorites, which is in Gilead. So they're going to begin oppressing them that year and then continue for 18 years. Is that how we read it?
That may be one way of looking at it. I mean, I don't know how else I could read it. But anyway, uh, moreover, the children of Ammon passed over Jordan to fight against, also against Judah and against Benjamin and against the house of Ephraim, so that Israel was sore distressed. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, saying, We have sinned against thee, both because we have forsaken our God and also served Balaam. And the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Did not I deliver you from the Egyptians and from the Amorites and from the children of Ammon and from the Philistines? The Zidonians also and the Amalekites and the Manoites did oppress you. And ye cried to me, and I delivered you out of their hand. Yet ye have forsaken me and served other gods, wherefore I will deliver you no more. Go and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. So it, it's just kind of interesting here. We don't have a person who's speaking that's represented here. We don't have the name of anybody. This is just God speaking to the children of Israel. So why, why is that? Repeat that question, please. So we don't have a prophet named or anything. We just have God speaks to the children of Israel. It, from how it's written, it's like he's speaking to them directly. It's but like I mean, God is taking the work into his own hands. Yeah. So, what, I mean, he must have somebody who's speaking these words to Israel. But it doesn't tell us any who this is, who's delivering this message. We just have... The Lord said unto the children of Israel. So, so when I look at this, I mean, this must be, as you say, God taking the work into his own hands. This is sort of giving a, a summary of what has happened. This isn't something that's going to be following, as far as this apostasy is concerned, a following Tola and J.R., J.R., Right? Yeah, the two five combination, which I noticed. <clears throat> Relating to the two years and the five years of the, the song. But anyway, so if we look at this story here, it's going to, I mean, obviously in this story, it's going to follow. But we can take this story and we can we can apply it to the apostasy that has been occurring in this movement for years. Now right. Now it says 18 years. Okay, so 18 years. Um, where would that bring us back to? 2004. Okay, so 2004. So what, what would we have in 2004? Isn't that right before the 2520 became again prominent? Right. So it's 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 so it's it's reaching back there. So we would say that this movement has been oppressed by the worship of these gods all the way back there. D does that make sense to people that we can do that? Because the point, the point is logical. Okay. So so what would be, so we can see within this movement, we have, we have had a manifestation of all of these false messages, right? Because that's really what we've been studying in, in the book of Judges. These messages um, that have come in to the movement that are, are representative as enemy messages, right? The oppression. And then we have judges raised up uh, in response to that. And God is testing and proving his people. He's giving this movement. Um, he's allowing these enemies to exist so that we can call upon God and be dependent upon him so that we can be led. God's Because we didn't remove these uh, enemies who possess the land. Right, that Israel didn't remove them. And so God allowed them to continue so he could test and prove them. 
So when we go back to 2004, um, what is it that we, we have in this movement? So in 2004, we have the meetings, whatever they're called, I can't think of them, uh, in Wales, I believe. Was it in Wales? No. no. It was in Ozone? Ozone. Ozone uh, is in California, or where is that? Is it in that, or is it in Arkansas? Is it Ozone, Arkansas? Maybe it's Arkansas. That makes more sense. Okay, so, so they have some meetings in Ozone, Arkansas in 2004. And, and then you have Brother Williams from, who, who's Brother Williams? He's from, from the UK, right? I don't know. Okay. So he, he's presenting some messages. Um, yeah, Manessa means causing to forget. Wrong conception, false doctrines, causing people to forget. God's, so this is just in the chat, God's leading. Okay. So anyway, if, if we were to go back to 2004, because when we studied um, the foundation, we examined the foundation of this message, we, we went through this history, and I, I just can't remember all of the, uh, the details, dates and things and place names. But yeah, so it's in Ozone, Arkansas, that we're going to have these meetings. There's this brother, Williams, who later problems arise with him. But it's really at this time that we start to see Jeff working with other people a bit more. Other than just, you know, when he goes in to uh, present, he, you know, people are obviously working with him when he presents in different places. Um, but there is an oppression. That is, we have a false understanding that continues through this movement. And... And we see people who are, um, I mean, we're all faulty, but they're faulty in a particular way. They're ambitious. Could we say that? That Jeff has to keep dealing with people who come into the movement for the wrong reason. Right. So... So this is the enemy that we're continually battling against. So they're going to go back. In a sense, this becomes a, a review or a summary of, of this whole history from 2004 to the present. Now, I mean, there's different ways we could sort of look at this. I mean, we know that um, 18 times 360, we could take that as a symbol. So that's 6,480 days. And, and we could go back from some date. So if we went back 6,480 days from today, um, that would actually not bring us back to 2014. That would bring us to March 28th, 2005. So if we did it that way. If we went back actually um, 18 years, that would bring us, of course, to 2004 and to the end of November in 2004. I don't know when the meetings were in Ozone, Arkansas. So, so I don't know if that's significant or if we would count from those meetings to some other date that might be significant. I don't know. But... If we go back, it, it brings us back to that period of time, somewhere between 2004 and November, at the end of November, to the spring of 2005. So maybe there's something there that we would have to look at into more detail to understand these 18 years. Right. Now... I mean, the 18 years, also another way to look at it uh, would be to go from September 11th, 2001. And 
um, to count 18 years. And that's going to bring us to 2019. Right? Right. And, and that would bring us to that time um, uh, where Jeff has, has stood up against the message of Parminder. So, so we could we could apply it there. We could just go from 2001, September 11th, and count that as the 18 years of oppression. So, so there are, there's two different ways to do it. And then we would take this message then in judges, and we would um, doesn't give us a judge here at this point, but it will in the next chapter. 9-11-19, um, the closing the doors to the Lambert Church. Okay, so was that when the doors to the Lambert Church were closed? That was on September 11th? Is that, um, is I wasn't there, so I couldn't give an answer to that. Okay. Um, does anybody know particularly the details of that? I mean, Jeff is going to do his last presentation on September 7th. And I know it's in that week that they, they have to do that, whether it's September 11th, 2019, I don't know for certain. Um, do, Aran, do you know if that's the date? Or you just kind of guess. I wasn't there either. I just know I just remember Jeff said something about that. Okay, so Jeff did mention September eleventh, two thousand nineteen. Well, I know it was that week, right? So they, they had to act because um, there was the fight over the church itself. So they 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 had to close the church. So the next Sabbath on the fourteenth of September, that had to be at the School of the Prophets. They couldn't have services anymore at the Lambert Church. So so if Jeff said it was September 11th, he was there. So I would think that that's probably pretty solid. If we could find where he says that, that would be good too. Okay. <clears throat> So you can see there's lots lots of interesting things here about this 18 years and that God gives them this message. Um, but it's it's going to be Jephthah, the Gileadite, that's going to be uh, the judge. So that's chapter, ch chapter 11. But I don't think we're done with chapter 10. Um, <clears throat> So, I mean, a number of different ideas here. I mean, we know that um, in that period of time, that change that happens with the end of Parminder's movement and, and the change that, that comes about to this movement, um, it's going to lead, to, of course, to November 9th, 2019, which we mark as a closed door, closed door for the false priests. But the change in the movement had to do with um, that God had taken the work into his own hands is the way that I understood it back there. So if we're going to say that God's taken the work into his own hands, I mean, we could apply it in both different, different ways. But there definitely was something different that happened at that time in how things unfolded. And, and Jeff had allowed God to take the work into into his hands, right? Jeff wasn't trying to control what was happening. Now, there might have been some of his family that was, but Jeff himself was willing to see what God was going to do. He did submit to God in accepting the July 18, 2020 prediction. And a lot of people didn't like it. You know, definitely his family did not like it. <clears throat> So we're, we're going to have to pick this up again tomorrow and I want people to think about it. But yeah, we've 
learn quite a bit today. Um, it's just where we would put this on the line. Um, part of that is dependent on how we understand Jephthah. So we had already understood Jephthah a certain way. Um, and so Jephthah definitely has to be a um, going back to this this time. It's 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 going to repeat this history. It's definitely not something in the future. It's something that's already happened to this movement. That's how we've understood it. So any final thoughts before we close with prayer? I think this is going to have to be considered through the day. Yeah. Okay. okay well, let's pray. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, uh, we thank you for the light that you have given us here, uh, especially what we see in Judges 9. And as we look at Judges chapter 10 and 11, in the following days, we ask, Lord, that you can give us wisdom and understanding. We pray for each person. We know that um, there's many struggles we face. Some of them are health problems that uh, people are having. So we pray uh, for those members here who are struggling with their health and limits their ability to study and to understand. But we know, Lord, you have a purpose in what happens to us. So we leave all things in your hands. Be with us now throughout this day. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen.